Welcome to a special edition of Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. On today's broadcast, Andrew will be sharing about the importance of having a biblical worldview. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Tuesday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Again this week, I am playing a brand new video series that I have out entitled Biblical Worldview. And the reason I'm playing the videos is because I'm, I'm making all kinds of quotes. We're giving stats, illustrations, and things that are just, you know, different than the way I normally sit here and talk. So we're illustrating these things visually to help you. And today we are continuing to talk about creationism versus evolution. This is actually my fourth day of teaching on this. If you've missed any of this material, we got brand new product out. And I think this is a game changer. It's going to make a big difference in many people's lives. So watch this video. At the end of the program, I'll come back on and share with you about how you can receive this brand new product for yourself and enable you to train and teach other people. It takes more faith to believe in evolution than it does to believe in creation. Dr. Grady McMurtry, who's from Australia, I've interviewed him on my television program. I've read some of his books. And anyway, he goes into great lengths to show how that Noah's flood could have caused all of the things that we see in all of these sedimentary layers and things. It's all explainable by a worldwide flood. Again, Mount St. Helens erupted in 1980, and it deposited all of these layers 75 feet high in 72 hours. And yet, according to the evolutionary model, they would look at that and say, no, it took millions of years. We know that it's different. The volcanic activity, the worldwide flood, did all of these things. Dr. McMurtry has a teaching entitled The Waters Clave, and he talks about the tectonic plates, how that there was at one time a supercontinent where all of the land mass was together, and during Noah's flood, these tectonic plates were separated. And even uh, many of the evolutionists believe this same thing, that there was a supercontinent called Pangaea. And if you look at the world maps, you can see where South America and Africa and all of these things kind of fit together. Well, there's a lot of things that go into this. But if you look at the mouth of all of the major rivers in the world, it only shows about 4,500 years worth of sedimentary deposits. Now, that's not only true of the Mississippi, but the Nile River, the Amazon River, other rivers, all of them show only about 4,500 years worth of sedimentary deposits that have been deposited at the mouth of those rivers. If it was millions and millions of years, then there would be much more deposits, but there's not. I remember back when man landed on the moon and scientists were saying that, you know, there was just going to be this cosmic dust that had landed on the moon, and they believed it was millions and millions of years. This is the reason that they made the lunar module and all of these things with these huge wheels because they were afraid that men would sink down into the sand. Instead, there was only an inch or two of sand on the moon consistent with a young period of time instead of millions and millions of years. The moon is moving away from the earth at a given rate. It is a measured rate. And if you were to go back in time, if the rate that the moon is moving away from the earth now is consistent, and if you were to use that as a factor and just go back in history, again, the moon would have been touching the earth if you go back very far. It couldn't have existed much more than 10,000 years ago. Our atmosphere is unique. The combination of all of the oxygen, the nitrogen, all of these elements that are in it, it is just unique. It couldn't have just happened accidentally. And there are just so many things. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to recognize that creation is speaking to us about a creator who designed things on purpose instead of haphazardly. You know, here's another example that this building that I'm in right now, we just bought this building in 2017, and I didn't have the money to do this. So I sent to my partners. My partners came through and enabled us to buy this building. 
AND SO I HAVE CREATED OUT HERE A MONUMENT TO OUR PARTNERS. WE CALL THEM OUR ELITE PARTNERS. AND SOME OF MY STUDENTS FROM YEARS BACK, I THINK IT WAS 2002, GAVE ME A BRONZE ANGEL. WE'VE NOW MOUNTED IT ON A PEDESTAL, AND THEN BEHIND IT, WE'VE PUT A WALL THAT HAS THE NAMES OF ALL OF OUR ELITE PARTNERS IN ALPHABETICAL ORDER. AND YOU KNOW, IF SOMEBODY WAS JUST TO WALK UP HERE AND TO SEE THIS STATUE OF AN ANGEL AND THIS WALL AND ALL OF THESE NAMES ARRANGED IN ALPHABETICAL ORDER, AND IF THEY CAME UP AND SAID, LOOK WHAT JUST EVOLVED. LOOK WHAT JUST HAPPENED. THIS MUST HAVE BEEN JUST HAPPENSTANCE. IT MUST HAVE BEEN RANDOM. ANYBODY WHO WOULD DO THAT, YOU WOULD CONSIDER THEM AN ABSOLUTE FOOL. AND YET THINK ABOUT THIS, THAT IN ONE SINGLE HUMAN CHROMOSOME, JUST ONE HUMAN CHROMOSOME HAS OVER 3.2 BILLION NUCLEOTIDE PAIRS ON EACH CHROMOSOME, AND THEY ARE ARRANGED IN A VERY COMPLEX PATTERN. I'VE GOT PROBABLY 3,800 NAMES ON THIS WALL OUT HERE. ONE HUMAN CHROMOSOME HAS 3.2 BILLION NUCLEOTIDES ARRANGED IN A VERY COMPLICATED ORDER. IF JUST ONE OF THOSE THINGS GETS OUT OF LINE, IT THROWS OFF THE WHOLE THING. AND YET THIS HAPPENS BILLIONS AND BILLIONS AND BILLIONS OF TIMES IN EVERY SINGLE PERSON'S BODY UPON THIS PLANET. AND PEOPLE THINK THAT THAT JUST HAPPENED ACCIDENTALLY, THAT IT JUST EVOLVED. THAT IS INFINITELY, INFINITELY MORE COMPLEX THAN ME ARRANGING 3,800 NAMES OUT HERE. ANYBODY WHO WOULD THINK THAT THAT JUST HAPPENED RANDOMLY, WE WOULD CALL THEM A FOOL. I SAY THAT ANYBODY WHO BELIEVES THAT THE COMPLEXITY OF THE HUMAN BODY AND ALL OF CREATION JUST HAPPENED RANDOMLY, THEY ARE A FOOL. LOOK AT THIS PASSAGE OF SCRIPTURE IN ROMANS CHAPTER 1, VERSE 18. IT SAYS, FOR THE WRATH OF GOD IS REVEALED FROM HEAVEN AGAINST ALL UNGODLINESS AND UNRIGHTEOUSNESS OF MEN WHO HOLD THE TRUTH IN UNRIGHTEOUSNESS, BECAUSE THAT WHICH MAY BE KNOWN OF GOD IS MANIFEST IN THEM, FOR GOD HAS SHOWN IT UNTO THEM. FOR THE INVISIBLE THINGS OF HIM FROM THE CREATION OF THE WORLD ARE CLEARLY SEEN. DIDN'T SAY JUST VAGUELY SEEN, BARELY SEEN. NO, IT'S CLEARLY SEEN, BEING UNDERSTOOD BY THE THINGS THAT ARE MADE, EVEN HIS ETERNAL POWER AND GODHEAD, SO THAT THEY ARE WITHOUT EXCUSE. DID YOU KNOW THAT THERE'S NOT A PERSON ON THIS PLANET THAT ONE TIME OR ANOTHER HASN'T THOUGHT ALONG THE LINES OF WHAT I'VE BEEN SAYING? CREATION WAS TESTIFYING TO THEM ABOUT THE EXISTENCE OF GOD. AND THAT'S WHAT THESE VERSES ARE SAYING. HE HAS REVEALED HIMSELF FROM HEAVEN AGAINST ALL UNGODLINESS. IT'S REVEALED IN THEM. IT'S NOT SOMETHING THAT YOU HAVE TO BE TOLD. EVERY PERSON KNOWS THERE HAS TO BE SOMETHING BIGGER THAN THEM TO HAVE CREATED THEM, THAT THINGS DON'T JUST HAPPEN. THIS WAS CLEARLY SEEN BY PEOPLE AT ONE TIME. IT SAYS THAT IT WAS UNDERSTOOD BY THE THINGS THAT ARE MADE, EVEN HIS ETERNAL POWER AND GODHEAD, SO THAT THEY ARE WITHOUT EXCUSE. YOU KNOW, WHEN I WAS IN VIETNAM, MY DIVISION HEADQUARTERS WAS IN CHU LAI, BUT MY BRIGADE HEADQUARTERS WAS AT HAWK HILL. AND OUTSIDE OF THERE, I DROVE BY THIS A NUMBER OF TIMES, THERE WERE THESE THREE BUILDINGS THAT WERE ANCIENT. I MEAN, THEY WERE BRICK BUILDINGS, AND THEY WERE PROBABLY FOUR OR FIVE STORIES TALL, BUT THEY WERE SO OLD THAT THEY WERE FALLING APART. TREES WERE GROWING OUT OF THE SIDES AND OUT OF THE TOPS. AND THE THING THAT INTRIGUED ME ABOUT THESE BUILDINGS, THEY WERE THREE BUILDINGS THAT WERE OUT IN A FLAT PRAIRIE, AND THEY WERE SO CLOSE TO EACH OTHER THAT I NEVER WAS ALLOWED TO GO UP AND WALK TO THEM. BUT FROM THE ROAD, IT LOOKED LIKE THAT YOU COULD JUST BARELY SQUEEZE. MAYBE YOU'D HAVE TO TURN SIDEWAYS TO SQUEEZE BETWEEN THESE BUILDINGS. THERE WERE THREE IDENTICAL BUILDINGS THAT WERE GROUPED TOGETHER LIKE THIS, AND THEY WERE ANCIENT. AND I ASKED ABOUT THEM, AND I WAS TOLD THAT THOSE PREDATED CHRISTIANITY COMING TO VIETNAM BY HUNDREDS OF YEARS, AND YET THEY BELIEVED IN A GOD WHO MANIFESTED HIMSELF IN THREE PARTS, VERY SIMILAR TO THE CHRISTIAN TRINITY. NOW, I'M NOT SAYING THAT IT WAS A TRUE WORSHIP OF GOD, BUT IT REFLECTS WHAT THESE VERSES ARE SAYING, THAT EVEN HIS ETERNAL POWER AND GODHEAD, THAT'S TALKING ABOUT THE TRINITY, FATHER, SON, AND HOLY SPIRIT. I'VE BEEN TO Chichen ITZA IN MEXICO, AND I WAS GETTING A TOUR OF THAT PLACE, AND THEY HAD GREAT ENGRAVINGS THERE, AND THE MAN SAID THAT uh, THEY WERE DEPICTING THE THUNDERBIRD AND ALL OF THESE DIFFERENT ANIMALS, AND THEY SAID THAT THE MAYANS WORSHIPPED A GOD THAT MANIFESTED HIMSELF IN THREE PARTS. 
Now again, I don't believe that it was a true worship of God because they did human sacrifice and terrible, grotesque things. When Columbus came, he actually found in Mexico City a pyramid made of over 300,000 human skulls, that that's what they built the pyramid out of. And he testified that they literally would offer sacrifices every morning and night, human sacrifices where they cut the hearts out of people and then they would kick the bodies down and the people at the bottom would be along there and they would literally cannibalize these people and just eat them as they were kicked down these Deals. That's the way that they were worshiping God. So I know that that was not a true worship of God, but it reflects what this verse says, that God had revealed on every place on this planet to every person who's ever lived the existence of God. Now, you will have people come up and say, no, that's not true. But that is true. That's what the Bible says. The Bible teaches in 1 Timothy chapter 4 that you can sear your conscience with a hot iron. That means that you can become so hardened towards your conscience that after a while you get to where you don't have one. And so that can happen, but you don't start out that way. Everybody at one time knew that there was a God. Everybody at one time, creation made them recognize even His eternal power and Godhead. I had an employee one time who heard me preach on this, and he said, that, you know, I respect you. He says, your teaching has really touched my life. And he says, but this isn't true of me. He said, I was raised in an atheistic home and I was taught that there was no God and I never believed in God and I never had this intuitive knowledge on the inside of me of the existence of God. And I told him, I said, look, I'm, I love you, but I said, you're wrong. I SAID, I BELIEVE THE WORD OF GOD MORE THAN I BELIEVE YOU. YOU MAY HAVE HARDENED YOURSELF. YOU MAY HAVE FORCED YOURSELF TO REJECT IT, BUT AT ONE TIME, YOU KNEW THAT THERE WAS A GOD. SO HE WENT AWAY AND HE WAS PRAYING ABOUT THIS, AND THE LORD REMINDED HIM OF A TIME WHEN HE WAS JUST A a YOUNG KID. I'M NOT SURE HOW OLD, MAYBE 10, 12 YEARS OLD, AND HE LIVED IN THE LOS ANGELES AREA, AND HE CLIMBED UP ON A HILL OVERLOOKING LOS ANGELES, AND HE WAS WATCHING THE SUNSET. AND AS THE SUNSET LIGHTS BEGIN TO COME ON ALL OVER LOS ANGELES, MILLIONS AND MILLIONS AND MILLIONS OF LIGHTS. AND HE WAS LOOKING AT THIS AND THINKING, YOU KNOW, THIS IS AMAZING, THE EFFORT THAT PEOPLE PUT INTO ALL OF THESE TRAFFIC LIGHTS, THE STREET LIGHTS, THE HOUSE LIGHTS, THE PORCH LIGHTS, ALL OF THESE THINGS. HE WAS THINKING ABOUT THAT THERE HAD TO BE THE LIGHTS CREATED AND THEN WIRES HAD TO BE RUN TO THEM AND ALL OF THIS WORK. AND AS HE WAS LOOKING DOWN ON THE CITY OF LOS ANGELES AND THINKING ABOUT HOW MUCH WORK IT WAS TO PRODUCE ALL OF THESE LIGHTS, HE SAYS AS IT GOT TOTALLY DARK, HE JUST LIFTED HIS EYES AND HE SAW ALL OF THE STARS IN THE SKY. AND HE SAID THAT THE THOUGHT IMMEDIATELY CAME TO HIM JUST THE SAME AS EVERY ONE OF THOSE LIGHTS IN LOS ANGELES HAD TO BE PUT THERE. THEY DIDN'T EVOLVE. SOMEBODY HAD TO CREATE THEM AND STRATEGICALLY PLACE THEM IN THE EXACT SAME WAY, EVERY LIGHT, EVERY STAR IN THE UNIVERSE HAD TO BE PUT THERE BY A CREATOR. AND THE LORD BROUGHT THIS BACK TO HIS MEMORY. BUT BECAUSE HE HAD BEEN TAUGHT THAT THERE WAS NO GOD, HE REJECTED THOSE THOUGHTS, HE PUSHED THEM DOWN. BUT AT ONE TIME, HE KNEW THIS. EVERY SINGLE PERSON KNOWS IN THEIR HEART THAT THERE IS ONLY ONE GOD AND THEY ARE NOT HIM. EVERY PERSON, EVERY EVOLUTIONIST, EVERY PERSON WHO IS SAYING THAT THESE THINGS HAPPEN RANDOMLY, THEY KNOW BETTER IN THEIR HEART. THEY MAY NOT ADMIT IT. THEY MAY HAVE SEVERED THEIR CONSCIENCE SO THAT NOW THEY ARE, YOU KNOW, JUST SITTING THERE AND SAYING, I HAVE NO CONVICTION. I BELIEVE WITH ALL OF MY HEART. BUT IF YOU WERE TO STICK A GUN TO THAT ATHEIST HEAD AND SAY, I'M GOING TO KILL YOU, I GUARANTEE YOU, HE'D CRY OUT TO THE GOD THAT HE SAYS HE DOESN'T BELIEVE IN. IT'S JUST A MIND GAME. ON A HEART LEVEL, EVERYBODY KNOWS THAT THERE'S A GOD. WHEN I WAS IN VIETNAM, I TALKED TO A NUMBER OF PEOPLE WHO CLAIMED TO BE ATHEISTS, AND YET WHEN THE BULLETS GOT TO FLYING AND THE BOMBS DROPPING, ALL OF THESE ATHEISTS WERE CRYING OUT TO GOD AT THE TOP OF THEIR LUNGS. IT'S A DECEPTION ON A HEART LEVEL. IF YOU CAN PULL BACK THE LAYERS OF INSENSITIVITY THAT PEOPLE PUT BETWEEN THEM AND GOD, ON A HEART LEVEL, EVERY SINGLE PERSON, YOU, ME, EVERY PERSON, KNOWS THAT THERE IS A GOD. I USED TO TRY AND ARGUE WITH PEOPLE AND TRY AND EXPLAIN THINGS. NOW, I JUST, I JUST BYPASS ALL OF THAT AND I SAY, LOOK, IN YOUR HEART, YOU KNOW THAT THERE'S A GOD. I ACTUALLY HAD A BIBLE STUDY IN VIETNAM 
WHERE AN ATHEIST CAME INTO MY BIBLE STUDY. I HAD ABOUT SIX OR SEVEN PEOPLE THAT I WAS TEACHING A BIBLE STUDY TO. AND THIS ATHEIST CAME DOWN AND HE LISTENED FOR JUST A FEW MINUTES. AND THEN HE GOT TO ASKING ME THESE INTELLECTUAL QUESTIONS THAT I WAS BRAND NEW IN THE LORD AND I DIDN'T HAVE AN ANSWER FOR THEN. I'VE LEARNED A LOT SINCE THEN, BUT I STILL DON'T UNDERSTAND EVERYTHING. I DON'T HAVE ALL OF THE ANSWERS. BUT ANYWAY, HE GOT TO ASKING ME HARD QUESTIONS AND I COULDN'T ANSWER HIS QUESTIONS. AND SO HE BASICALLY JUST STOOD UP AND MOCKED ME. HE SAYS, THERE IS NO GOD. YOU'RE AN ABSOLUTE FOOL. AND HE SAYS, I'M LEAVING. WHO WILL GO WITH ME? AND ALL OF MY BIBLE STUDY, ALL SIX OR SEVEN OF THOSE GUYS LEFT WITH THIS ATHEIST. AND I WAS HOLDING IT IN A CHAPEL ON OUR uh, FIRE SUPPORT BASE. AND SO I WAS JUST SITTING THERE AND PRAYING, GOD, WHAT COULD I HAVE DONE DIFFERENTLY? AND WHILE I WAS PRAYING, THIS ATHEIST WALKS BACK IN. AND HE SAT DOWN. AND FOR A FEW MINUTES, HE ACTED LIKE HE WAS JUST LOOKING AT SOME OF THE BOOKS THAT WERE IN THE LIBRARY AND THINGS. AND I STARTED PRAYING AND SAYING, OH, GOD, GIVE ME ANOTHER CHANCE. HELP ME TO REACH THIS GUY. AND AS I WAS PRAYING ABOUT IT, HE WALKED OVER AND HE SAYS, I WANT WHAT YOU HAVE. AND I WAS SHOCKED. I SAID, YOU DO? <laughs> I MEAN, YOU JUST MADE A FOOL OUT OF ME, AND YET YOU WANT WHAT I HAVE. AND HE SAYS, I'M A PRINCETON GRADUATE. I'M AN INTELLECTUAL. I GOT ALL OF THESE DEGREES. HE SAYS, I MADE A FOOL OF YOU. I OUT-TALKED YOU. AND YET, YOU STILL BELIEVE. YOU'VE GOT SOMETHING THAT'S MORE THAN JUST AN ARGUMENT. HE SAYS, MY WHOLE LIFE IS BASED ON AN ARGUMENT. IF SOMEBODY WAS TO OUT-ARGUE ME AND MAKE A FOOL OF ME THE WAY I JUST MADE OF YOU, HE SAYS, MY WHOLE LIFE WOULD COME CRASHING DOWN BECAUSE IT'S ALL BASED ON INTELLECTUAL ARGUMENTS. BUT YOU'VE GOT AN EXPERIENCE. YOU'VE GOT SOMETHING THAT IS REAL BEYOND JUST INTELLECT. I WANT WHAT YOU HAVE. AND I GOT TO LEAD THIS GUY TO THE LORD. MY POINT IS THAT, SEE, HE SAID HE WAS AN ATHEIST, BUT ON A HEART LEVEL, HE KNEW BETTER. HE WAS LOOKING FOR SOMETHING MORE. HE WASN'T SATISFIED WITH JUST HIS INTELLECTUAL ARGUMENTS. YOU KNOW, THE SCRIPTURE SAYS IN 1 TIMOTHY CHAPTER 4, VERSES 1 AND 2, NOW THE SPIRIT SPEAKETH EXPRESSLY THAT IN THE LATTER TIME SOME SHALL DEPART FROM THE FAITH, GIVING HEED TO SEDUCING SPIRITS AND DOCTRINES OF DEVILS, SPEAKING LIES AND HYPOCRISY, HAVING THEIR CONSCIENCE SEARED WITH A HOT IRON. I MADE REFERENCE TO THIS A MOMENT AGO, BUT NOTICE THAT IN THE CONTEXT IT SAYS THEY WILL GIVE HEED TO SEDUCING SPIRITS AND DOCTRINES OF THE DEVIL. THE THEORY OF EVOLUTION IS A DOCTRINE OF THE DEVIL. THEISTIC EVOLUTION IS JUST A SANITIZED, WHITEWASHED DOCTRINE OF THE DEVIL. CREATIONISM AND EVOLUTION ARE INCOMPATIBLE ON MANY, MANY LEVELS. AND YOU CANNOT EMBRACE EVOLUTION WITHOUT HARDENING YOURSELF, DEADENING YOURSELF TO THE CONVICTION OF GOD. IT JUST IS INCOMPATIBLE. AND SO I WANT TO ENCOURAGE YOU THAT IF WE ARE GOING TO HAVE A BIBLICAL WORLDVIEW, WE'RE GOING TO HAVE TO TAKE THE BIBLE AND BELIEVE IT LITERALLY. NOW, THERE ARE SOME THINGS IN THE BIBLE THAT ARE SYMBOLIC, BUT IT'LL MAKE IT VERY CLEAR. LIKE OVER IN REVELATION CHAPTER 12 WHEN IT TALKS ABOUT THE DRAGON GRABBING ONE-THIRD OF THE STARS AND CASTING THEM TO THE EARTH, IT SAYS THAT DRAGON IS THE DEVIL, THAT OLD SERPENT, THE DEVIL. IT'LL EXPLAIN ITSELF. SURE, THERE'S SYMBOLISM IN THE BIBLE, BUT WHEN THE BIBLE IS USING AN ALLEGORY, WELL, THEN, YES, YOU KNOW, LEARN LESSONS FROM IT. BUT WHEN IT SAYS THAT GOD CREATED THE HEAVENS AND THE EARTH, THAT'S NOT SYMBOLISM. WHEN IT SAYS HE DID IT ON THE FIRST DAY, THAT'S NOT SYMBOLISM. WHEN IT SAYS THE EVENING AND THE MORNING WERE THE FIRST DAY, IT'S SPECIFICALLY TALKING ABOUT PERIODS OF TIME. WE NEED TO TAKE THE BIBLE LITERALLY. WE NEED TO BELIEVE IT, AND WE NEED TO REJECT EVOLUTION. IF THE ROOT IS BAD, THE FRUIT IS BAD. AND I TELL YOU, THE FRUIT THAT HAS COME THROUGH EVOLUTION WITH ALL OF THESE DESPOTS OF THE 20TH CENTURY IS ENOUGH PROOF TO ME NOT TO DO WHAT THEY'VE DONE. AS A MAN THINKS IN HIS HEART, SO IS HE. THE REASON THEY WERE THE WAY THEY WERE WAS BECAUSE OF THE WAY THEY THOUGHT. I'M NOT GOING TO ADOPT THEIR THOUGHT PATTERNS OR I'LL BE LIKE THEM. I'LL BECOME INSENSITIVE TO PEOPLE. I'LL BEGIN TO BELIEVE THAT PEOPLE ARE JUST AN EVOLVED ANIMAL AND THEREFORE WE CAN TERMINATE THEIR LIFE WHEN IT'S INCONVENIENT. AND THAT'S WRONG. WE WERE CREATED BY GOD. WE WERE CREATED IN THE IMAGE OF GOD. WE ARE GOING TO ANSWER TO A GOD. AND THESE THINGS ARE TRUE. AND SO WE'VE GOT TO BELIEVE IN THE BIBLICAL CREATIONISM. WE CANNOT COMPROMISE ON THIS ISSUE OR IT'S GOING TO TAKE US DOWN A ROAD THAT NONE OF US WANT TO GO TO. SO IN OUR NEXT SERIES, I'LL GO INTO SOME OTHER THINGS, BUT WE'RE TALKING ABOUT A BIBLICAL WORLDVIEW. AND IF YOU'LL RECEIVE IT, I BELIEVE THAT THIS WILL ABSOLUTELY CHANGE YOUR LIFE.
Man, I tell you, this is powerful stuff that we're talking about. And creationism, the things that I've been sharing for the last few days are not understood even by most Christians. So I tell you, this is something that you really need to grab hold of. If you compromise on this issue, it will take away your confidence and security in the Word of God. So this is absolutely essential, vital that you get this. I encourage you to listen to our announcer and please contact us and receive this material today. Today, Andrew's pleased to offer his highly anticipated series, Biblical Worldview, Foundational Truths. In this series, Andrew outlines the importance for every Christian believer to have a biblical worldview. I am really excited about this brand new product that we have entitled Biblical Worldview Foundation Truths. This has been years in the making and it's different than just my typical teaching in the sense that we have graphs, charts, quotes, all kinds of visuals to supplement this. And I tell you, my uh, media department just did a great job. I think that this is one of the most important things I've ever taught. Each of the 12 lessons in this series include a video, audio file, chapter lesson, and printable PDF wrapped in a single box set containing a workbook, audio USB, and a personal access code to the online videos. Each lesson is full of supporting facts, quotes, charts, and historic visuals. Through the online platform, you'll have lifetime access to all of the videos and digital workbooks on your computer or smart device. Biblical Worldview Foundational Truths is available for only $120. Go to awmi.net to order this valuable resource today for you or someone you love. Many of you know that we have built a 1,022 space parking garage to accommodate all of our people that come to our facilities in Woodland Park. And it was at a $23 million cost and we are trying to get that paid off as quickly as we can. Well, I felt like the Lord spoke to me about encouraging 23,000 people to give a $1,000 offering, either a one-time gift or pledged out over a period of 10 months, $100 per month. If you would like to be a part of that, I encourage you to call or write, go to our website and join our 1K Club. You can become a partner or order resources through our website at awmi.net or call our helpline Monday through Friday from 4.30 a.m. to 9.30 p.m. Mountain Time at 719-635-1111. To write us, use the address on your screen. We appreciate your generosity and hope to hear from you today. I'd like to invite you to join us on August the 11th through the 14th for our 2020 Healing Is Here conference. Last year was tremendous. We saw the dead raised. We saw people come out of wheelchairs. We saw thousands of people healed. And I tell you, during this coronavirus uh, problem that we've been having, we need healing. We need to understand these truths. It would bless you. So remember, it's August the 11th through the 14th in Woodland Park, Colorado, our 2020 Healing Is Here conference. The trajectory of your life is about to change. Forget what has gone on in the past. Forget all the zillions of people that you've had pray for you. Forget all of the doctor's reports that have come against you in the past. God has a future for your life and it's good. You have to say it. The power of God is voice activated. And you have to speak words. All pain Thank you, Jesus. gone now Thank you, Jesus. in Jesus' name. Welcome to the AWM Minute, a small glimpse on how the friends and partners of Andrew Womack Ministries are changing lives all around the world. Lives like Teresa Hotelling, who decided to fight the diagnosis of Sjogren's Syndrome and lupus by attending Karis Bible College. After sitting under the Word for months, the reality of her identity in Christ became more real to her than the sickness she was fighting, and during worship one day, she took authority over all of her symptoms. 
It was like there was an explosion on the inside of me. And I just very calmly began to say, Sjogren's syndrome, you get out of my body. Lupus, you get out of my body. Carpal tunnel, you be healed in Jesus' name. Back, you be healed in Jesus' name. And I, it was so calm. It was like surreal. And I just knew that it was done. Today, Teresa is completely healed and has graduated Karis to go into full-time ministry. To see her story, visit awmi.net today. I want to let you know that we have now started a Karis Daily Live Bible Study. We've been doing a Bible study every Tuesday night live for about two years, but now we have five days a week. We've varied the times so that we can accommodate anybody's schedule, and it's going to really be good. We're going to use our instructors from the school, and it'll be a blessing. So remember, we now have a Karis Daily Live Bible Study five days a week. Karis, an accredited Bible college in the beautiful town of Woodland Park, has been changing people's lives for over 25 years. The people here are so like-minded. They want to help you grow. These are people who genuinely care about you. They want the best for you. Be prepared to be blown away with the teachings. It's not just a season in your life. There's no way you can't change. You can't really go wrong going to a place that you get to sit and listen to the Word for four hours a day. Being under the Word that much just allowed God to pour so much into me. If you feel supernatural peace about coming to Karis, that's God. I know you're like, how, when, where, all these questions, just do it. The Lord will provide. I was doubting and second guessing it, but when I took that step of faith, immediately like things were provided. Just being around like-minded believers, teachers who are there for you and ready to talk to you at any moment and answer your questions, there's just nothing like it. Just follow the leading of the one that you serve and that's always going to be the right direction to go. Go to karisbiblecollege.org to register today. If you're a minister, experience the dynamic and life-changing organization which is now available to you, ARMY. I've found that I'm not alone. There's a whole army of folks who believe the same way that I do. ARMY is about receiving the love and grace message taught by Andrew Womack. It provides you with interactive webinars, regional conferences with world-renowned speakers, and practical workshops on relevant topics. It is showing up in every message we preach in our church, every message we minister, every time we pray for someone. ARMY is also about receiving training through Andrew Womack's Continuing Education for Ministers program made available through Karis Bible College. And it helps a young pastor like myself and smaller ministries to, to connect with larger ministries that have experienced a lot more and have so much more to offer. Get connected with ARMY today. Do you want to connect with like-minded believers? Do you want to go deeper in God's Word through the teachings of Andrew Womack? Then Karis Bible Studies is the place for you. Karis Bible Studies are connecting believers with the Word of God in your neighborhood. Find a Bible study near you by visiting karisbiblestudies.net.